Hello my friends, today we are going to edit an infrared image. We will take this image from that to that again. This will be the image we're starting with. This is the image we'll end up with. So as you can see, I shot this with my A7 II converted camera to 720 nanometers. And the lens I use is the Samyang 24 millimeter 2.8. I shot this at uh, f7.1. So how would we edit this image? Well, first of all, we have to go take care of our white balance. And I will go into my profile and I have a custom DNG profile here. Uh, I'll click on that. If you do not know how to create this, I do have another infrared video posted where we will show you how to create that. But for now, I will click on that and my white balance looks a lot better. Great, now with our um, white balance fixed, we need to crop the image. So I will take my cropping tool over here. First thing I wanna do, I wanna make sure this building here is straight. So I'll use this angle tool and go down this line. Make sure this line is absolutely straight, something like that. Then I also want to crop it just a little bit tighter. So I will pull it from this corner maybe. I do wanna keep this sun flare here because I'll be messing with it. So maybe, Maybe something like that looks good. And I will accept the changes. Now I will do just a few basic adjustments. I will take the exposure down a little bit. Maybe I will add some contrast. I'll take the highlights down. You see this affects the cloud over here. And I'll open out the shadows just a little bit. I'll add some white and take down the blacks. I will add some texture, maybe around 20 and some clarity around 20. I will add some vibrance around 25. And let's see, then we'll go down over here to sharpening and I'll keep it a default at 40. Hold down option on the Mac, move the slider of masking to the right, make sure I'm only sharpening the buildings, not the sky. Then click remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction. The white balance is a lot better. It still seems a little bit off. So I'm going to use the color picker and just click on this cloud. Make sure my cloud is white. Great. Now we are looking a lot better. And now we send the image into Photoshop for our next set of edits. Command E to send it into Photoshop. And here we are. The first thing I want to do is swap the channels. And for that, I'll go into my adjustment layers, go to channel mixer. And over here we are in the red channel. I want to take the red channel from 100 to zero and take the blue channel to plus 100. Then I will go into the blue channel and over here I'll take the blue channel from 100 to zero and I'll put my red from zero to 100. Great. Now we are doing great. I want to go into the hue adjustment layer. I'll go into hue and saturation. And I will just maybe shift it just a tiny little bit towards blue, the whole image, to take some of this red off the building. And then also I wanna go into my cyan and just to move it a little bit more towards blue and increase the saturation to bring more blue into the sky. Something like that. Now our image looks overexposed, so I am going to take a curves and just bring down the exposure a little bit. I like that better. And that is great. Now what I want to do is maybe remove a little bit of the color onto these buildings. They're a little bit too pinkish for me. So I want to remove some of that saturation and that way I will, uh, they will appear a little bit brighter too. So I will go another hue and saturation adjustment layer. I'll take this little hand over here and just pick some of this color and then take the saturation down and that will bring them a little bit of a more neutral tone, something like that. Now I also want to brighten this building a little bit. And for that, I will go to, let's see, I will use the TKA panel and I'll choose this color picker. If you do not have the TKA panel, you can just use selective color from select 
and then go to color range and you can do the same thing. So I chose that color, I will click OK. Now I want to modify the selection because you can see it's not a lot of white in there. So I'll go into my levels and just brighten it up a little bit. And now we have a better selection. I will output that into a curves adjustment layer and you see our mask is over here now. I can just brighten those pixels a little bit, something like that. Not too much, but a little bit. And that makes a big difference. Great. What else do I want to do? I want to add a bigger sound flare. It already has a sound flare here. I just don't feel like it's that impressive. And also I want to remove this sun reflection from this building because I feel like it's distracting. So I will use my patch tool and I am just going to, you know, make a selection around it. Oops, I'm sorry. I am on this curve layer. Make sure you are on your pixel layer. And I will drag this over there. And then I'll also get rid of this little corner of the building. It's sticking out right there. And that is good. Command D to deselect. I'm going to close this panel for now. Command zero to fit the screen so you can see it better. And now it's time to add my sound flare. So I will go to file, place embedded. And I do have some sound flares here. Let's see, I will use this one, the sound flare 13 maybe first. And I will accept it. I will change the blending mode into, let me just put it on very top because right now it's taking all these adjustments that are on top. There we go. And I'll change the blending mode to screen. And now we have our sun flare. With the move tool, I will move it and put it right here where the sun was. And that is looking great. Now I want to add one more sun flare. So I'll go to file, place embedded, and I will use this warmer tone sun flare. Click on place. Accept it and here I want to make this one bigger so I will hold down shift and drag it to make it bigger. I'll change the blending mode from normal to screen again and this way I will put this one right over here. And we'll get this nice rays coming through. Now I do want it to be a little bit even warmer tone so on this layer with this layer selected I will go I will change I will get a hue saturation adjustment layer and clip clip it to the layer below by using this button and now it's clipped and whatever adjustments I'm making it only affects this one soft layer. So first I will increase the saturation maybe to something like that and let's see we'll change the hue to something a little bit warmer and that looks better. This is our before and after this adjustment. I do like the warmer tones. And we'll go with that. Now, I do want to actually darken this side of the image a little bit, but I want to go under my flares because I do not want to, you know, affect my sun flare. And I'll create a curves adjustment and just darken it. That way my sun flare is standing out even more. So I will maybe darken it to about that much. But I do not want it to affect this side of my image. So with my uh, mask selected, I will apply a gradient here. And let's see if I go this way. Uh, nope, I want to go the other way because I want the white to be on this side. I only want to affect the left side of the image. Something like that. Maybe even more. Something like that looks good. Great, that looks fantastic. Now, I feel like this uh, building still has a little bit too much color for me. So let's see, I am going to create another hue saturation. I'm gonna put it under the sun flares because I do not want to affect the sun flares. Takes this little hand tool Click again on this building and bring the saturation down. And that looks better. Almost gray. I kind of like that. Just a hint of color. And that looks fantastic. 
Now I need to sharpen this image because you know the camera and the lens combination that I have there are not very sharp. To do so I will make a stamp layer. On the Mac you do Command, Option, Shift and E. And this makes a stamp layer. A stamp layer is basically a picture of all the layers below. So it's all combined into one single layer. And with this layer selected I will go to Filter, other and high pass. Basically you want to start all the way from the left and slowly move it to the right until you see some nice outline of the buildings. In this case 2.2 looks great and click OK and then change the blending mode to overlay. And if I zoom in, let's zoom in at 100%. Look at this uh, building here. This is before our sharpening. You see it's a little bit soft and hazy. And then with the sharpening, it just brings everything to life. Command zero to fit to screen. Now, one last thing I want to do is to add a vignette. And my favorite way of creating a vignette is by using this uh, elliptical marquee tool. And I will drag a circle maybe around, let's see, this size. And I'll put it over here over the sun. And that looks great. Then I will go to the adjustment layers and create a curve adjustment layer and bring down the luminance. Well, now I'm darkening the sun part, which I want to darken the outside, not the inside. So with my mask selected, command I to invert the mask. And now we have a vignette, but we have a very, very harsh line. So with the mask selected into your uh, layer properties, take the feather up to maybe around 700. 733 that looks good and that gives us a nice feather of our vignette this is the before this is the after now i feel like that's probably a little bit too dark so click back on the curve tool and, and just adjust it to something that looks right maybe something like that and this is our before and after subtle but effective now we can flatten our image. To flatten your image, just right click on your layer, go to flatten image, and we will take it back into Lightroom, see if we need to do any more adjustments there. Go to file, close, and make sure you click save. And this will send it back into Lightroom. And this is our image. Let's see, do we wanna do anything else in here? Maybe we want to add a little bit more whites. I'm not worried with my sun flare being blown out that's okay because it is the sun it's the brightest thing if i would have blown out any other details then i would have been worried about and then maybe bring the blacks down just until we see some pure blacks maybe something like that and that is our edit this is the image before we took it into photoshop and this is the image we brought back from photoshop I hope this was helpful and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.